All right, we are about to discuss the table A-3, which is the T distribution critical values for T. And it's called T sub alpha over 2. We are going to be looking for now just at this heading, where it says area in two tails. Now, across the top are going to be numbers. You're not quite sure what they mean. Let me explain. These are what are known as this point 0, 1, point 0, 2, 0, 5, 1, 2. These are what are called alpha values. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and that is like that. That's alpha. What is it? Well, alpha values are simply the complement of your confidence level. In other words, if we're 99% confident that we're right, that means there's 1% chance that we're not right. And that's what an alpha value is, the probability that we've made a mistake. So sometimes we express it in terms of our probability we're wrong rather than the probability that we're right. But I recommend what you just do is right on your right on your paper, right above each of these, go ahead and put the com corresponding confidence level. If we're at point zero 0.01, well, that's a confidence level of 99%. And 0, 0.2, of course, there's my 98%. Zero 0.5, that's that's 90. I'm going to pull off to the side here. 95% confidence. Point 0.1, of course, that's 90%. And we actually have a fifth column here, in case you'd ever want it. I can't imagine why we'd ever want to go down to an 80, only an 80% confidence level, but it's here. In case you need it. Now, looking over on the left-hand side, in the left-hand column, if these are readable, notice that these are the degrees of freedom. I said earlier that the T sub alpha values are based on two things, our confidence level or alpha values, depending on how you want to look at it, and secondly, the number of degrees of freedom. And recall degrees of freedom is simply one less than the sample size. Okay, it starts at 1, and it goes up by 1s, then it changes by 2s, and it changes by 5s, and it changes by 100s, changes by 1000s, if you look at the entire left side. So, let's do an example or two. Let's say we want to do an example. I want to find the critical value for T if we have, let's write this here, example, If we are at 98% confidence and N, the sample size, is 17, what would be my T sub alpha over 2 value that I would use in my formula to find E, the margin of error? Well, using this table, sample size of 17, 98% confidence. All right, here's my 98% confidence column. There's 17, but we're not going to use 17. These are degrees of freedom. If N is 17, then the number of degrees of freedom is 16. So 16, bringing this over in this column, we get, if that's readable, 2.583. So that would be 2.583. This is the value we would use in calculating E. Now, before we go any further, I want to do an example. But first, I want to compare this to the corresponding Z score. The Z sub alpha over 2 value, we know for 98%, is 2.33. If we were doing a proportion, we would use 2.33 standard deviations go out on either side of our sample proportion. Here... Because we have to use the standard deviation of the sample, that introduces another level of uncertainty. And so to account for that, we have to go out a little bit further. Do you see the 2.583 is a little bit bigger than 2.33? We have to go a little bit further to make sure we have accounted for 98% of all possible values. All right, let's do another example just to make sure we understand how this table works. Let's say we want to be 90% confident. I'm going to abbreviate this. 98% confident level. And let's say we want to uh, have a sample of size 67. Okay. I want to know what is my T sub alpha over 2 value. Well, going back to the table, 
Uh, I've got the bottom end of this table. Here's the here's the lower end. Since I enlarged it, I can't fit it all in one sheet. But I did write across the top the headings, the confidence levels. And on the left hand side, I see that I'm going by fives here, and, and 67 is in here. And besides, we got to subtract one anyway to get the degrees of freedom. So the number of degrees of freedom could be 66. The closest value we have here to 66 is 65. So using this row, coming over to what we say, 90%, this gives me a critical value for t of 1.669. That's 1.669. Once again, I like to take a second and compare it to the corresponding z-score for a confidence level of 90%, which hopefully you recall is 1.64. Notice once again, because of the, we've added a little bit of uncertainty by choosing the standard deviation of the sample in the formula, we have to go out a little bit further in either direction of the mean to make sure we actually account for all 90% of the possible values. So, in my next video, we'll actually do an example problem which we will actually use T sub alpha over 2 along with the sample's mean and standard deviation to create a confidence level for a population mean.